Nick and her back with the fantastic release of the Z9 and a full release later this month. There have been other launches this week, but the camera that I really want to see, and the one that has so much depending on it, is the Nikon Z9. With one more teaser video to come, we should see the final reveal soon. The specs are nearly all known, and they look very impressive, but let's temper down our expectations as specs aren't everything. We need to see how it performs in the hands of non-Nikon ambassadors. And it looks like this will be happening very soon, with the camera expected to be on sale in 2021. But will it be enough to get Nikon back where they belong in the top three? Let's look into that. Hi, I'm Tom and welcome to Rumour Has It. This is an exciting time for camera fans. New sensor technology and faster processors are making a step change in camera performance and most brands are seeing big advances. It's just the timing that differs, and now it's Nikon's turn to show us what they've got. So let's look at the specs in the teaser videos that Nikon have released, and see what else we might be able to tell. Nikon Z9 specs. We know the camera is headlining 8K video, and that means it's got a minimum 45 megapixel start frame FX sensor. The key thing to look for here is the sync speed in electronic shutter mode, as this will tell us what the readout speed is capable of. The Sony A1 reads out at 5 milliseconds, which equates to 1 200th of a sync speed. Nikon's sensor could better this. If it's built on the A1 technology as we suspect, yet pushing fewer pixels, this will explain Nikon's claim of a better rolling shutter performance than the A1. Improved noise levels and significantly better dynamic range are also being touted. It seems all the new sensors coming out are offering improvements here, and this is normally a strength for Nikon cameras, so I'm keen to see the results of tests. Now look at the processor. The new Xspeed 7 image processing engine designed for 8K has a newly developed imaging pipeline to broaden the sensor readout and emphasise the speed. This is an area where Nikon have struggled in the past. They fitted two of the Xspeed 6 generation's processors to the Z7 II and it was still slow compared to Canon's Digic X and Sony's Bion's processors. Now looking at the 8K specs, with 24 and 30 frames per second, the teaser video showed two hours recording time on 8K. Interestingly, the teaser showed this being achieved in a relatively hot climate. I have no doubt that Nikon have learned from Canon here, and the reception that the R5 got with heat management. This will be a key measure for any aspiring flagship, so I'm sure that Nikon have got this sorted. As expected, the other video specs are by now fairly standard, though there is a suggestion that we'll see 16-bit RAW. Now will that be 4K30 or 8K30? Now let's look at the EVF. The blackout free EVF is going to be 120Hz and it's expected to equal the Canon R3 EVF in terms of resolution at 5.76 million dots. The sensor readout speeds are crucial to lag free EVF and we can expect Nikon's claims for this to be true. They certainly seem to have something special in this processor and sensor combination. Now let's look at the shutter. The rumour says multi-leaf blade protected shutter, so it looks like Nikon have taken a leaf out of Canon's book with this shutter and we can expect it to offer sensor protection. The new shutter will also have programmable levels of shutter sound from silent to Nikon D6 machine gun. However, this may not tell the full story. The mention of leaf blade shutters makes me wonder. Traditionally, leaf blade shutters are seen as slower than focal plane shutters, but they do offer advantages in distortion, rolling shutter and flash synchronisation. They're normally seen on high-end medium format cameras. I'm not sure if this rumour is true, with a higher shutter speed expected from modern cameras, but Nikon might have a surprise here. This could be the secret to the claim of no rolling shutter. 
Now looking at autofocus. With human, animal and vehicle autofocus, the teaser suggests that this will be hugely improved AF performance for Nikon. Head-on approaching subjects were previously a challenge for Nikon's autofocus. The camera will also autofocus down to light levels of minus 7 EV. This low light capability would equal the Canon R3 and the Fuji X-T4. Now looking at the new LCD, this is a portrait mode. And this was also seen in the teasers which seemed to prove that the rear screen isn't fully articulating but will tilt in landscape and portrait mode. Now look at card slots. With dual XQD card slots that are also CF Type B compatible. And this is a wise move by Nikon. These Type B cards are much more affordable than the Type A cards that Sony uses. Now looking at battery. The Z9 will use the EN EL18C battery. But there will also be a new battery, the EN EL18X. This can be charged from the camera's USB-C port. Now looking at connectivity. With a gigabit LAN and USB-C, Wi-Fi and GPS built in. All this is expected in a flagship camera these days. Now looking at price. The price rumours are picking up again. With some suggestion that Nikon will undercut Sony and Canon with a price below $6,000. This could be true as Nikon need to win back customers and in particular agencies with this camera. So would it be a surprise if the price of this camera started with a 5? On paper it certainly looks like Nikon will have the flagship camera for 2021. But the Z9 alone will not restore Nikon to the top 3. The expected sales volumes for the Z9 alone are not enough. Nikon need to trickle down any improvements in processor, autofocus and sensors to the higher selling tiers like the Z7 and the Z6. And they need to do this as fast as possible. Let's be clear, both these existing cameras are capable and give good results, but they've no standout advantage and they may please Nikon owners, but they'll not win back Sony or Canon users. To get back into the top three where they belong, Nikon need to win back these lost customers, and to do this they need to bring the Z9 level of innovation to all the tiers, and soon. Now can I ask you to help me achieve my target of 500 subs this year? I'd certainly appreciate it. And why not try this video next, which YouTube thinks will interest you, or perhaps this one might suit you better. And thanks for watching, rumour has it. I hope you'll be back soon.